Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here bringing you today's video from my lovely home office as usual in the lovelier city of Jerusalem, uh, Yerushalayim. And I thought I'd cover a uh, entertaining facet of Israeli culture today from my viewpoint as an immigrant here, as an Ole Hadash of seven years uh, vintage. Now, I'm a huge fan of a YouTube channel called Peace of Hebrew. It's, it's run by Doron and Elsa. Doron is like the only Israeli you will ever find who will actually speak Hebrew at a comprehensible uh, pace. It's an amazing channel, whether you're learning Hebrew for the first time or you've been here like me for a while and your Hebrew uh, uh, rustified. Is that a word, rustified? Got rusty. I like rustified. If your Hebrew rustified over uh, the COVID period, then uh, their channel is so, so good. In my opinion, the state of Israel, instead of putting money into these old-fashioned Ulpan programs where they still use cassette tapes, or at least it was back in my day in 2015, they should be funding creators like Doron and Elsa, helping them make more videos because their content is so useful for Olim and so many more people uh, could be benefiting from it. So I'm doing what's called in Hebrew, another word, Another Hebrew slang is called Firgun. Firgun is an unusual word and it means like what I'm doing when you really sort of uh, get into something, somebody else's uh, content or just what they do and you try to share it with people that you care about. So I'm doing Firgun. I recommend uh, their YouTube channel highly. I'll put a link in the description. What I wanted to talk about though in uh, today's video was friar culture. So I looked on YouTube, I put in uh, what, what does Freier mean to see if anyone had tried to kind of explain the, the, what, what it is. And I found a couple of short videos giving very sort of dictionary uh, descriptions, you know, which is very easy to do, right? A Freier, and that's my attempt to roll my R's like an Israeli, Freier, um, it means a sucker. And uh, that's basically, we can end the video here if we're just talking about the definition, right? It means someone who is, I guess, uh, gullible. Um, they get scooped into like bad deals, not the most discerning person. You get the idea, right? And it doesn't just mean in deals. It just means in general, a friar is a sucker. Now, but that doesn't really do justice to the uh, pervasive fear in Israeli culture of being a friar and how far reaching that is it's one of the strangest facets of israeli culture versus the culture of ireland uh where i grew up so let me try to just explain it a bit more there's this uh, expression in hebrew called lo letzet freyer it means lo letzet not to leave and in this case it means to like emerge from a situation freyer lo letzet freyer and that explains what freyer culture is israelis are always worry that they're going to be screwed over or get some kind of a bad deal and that uh fear is firstly this kind of weird uh national fear and it causes people to proactively put their guard up now i'm not a uh, anthropologist i'm not even really uh i'm not a sabra a born israeli so uh, originally born israelis can uh, comment on on my observations of this culture so it's a national fear and, and no one everyone is worried that they're going to be uh, screwed over uh, for, for good or for worse. Now, I think there is good and bad aspects to this cultural aspect of Israeli culture, much as if you critiqued any culture, uh, you'd find good and bad things about it. But in the case of Israel, it's kind of particular, there's something vaguely comical about this fear, particularly if you didn't grow up, grow up from it. It's used, for instance, you'll see it in Israeli ads, right? When you're watching Hebrew TV and the ads come up, you'll sometimes see uh marketing saying like don't be a don't be a sucker like uh you know i'll uh, i'll fryer and do and buy our product right and i think that's a very strange form of advertising that wouldn't really connect with uh people in other countries where that's not sort of this entrenched norm now i would say the bad side of not not wanting to be a fryer is i don't know firstly really where it comes from so if you uh, know where it comes from or you have thoughts about where this uh, strange mentality stems from really please leave them in the comments I'd be very interested to have a uh, to hear from Israelis as in native born Israelis about this because I find it very interesting and I think a lot of Olim Khadashim do as well um, but wherever this trait originates I think the bad side of it is that people can um, be sort of harsh to other people because they don't want to be a friar. So you might, for instance, see this on the roads. And the roads in Israel are absolutely uh, chaos. I hate driving in Israel. Um, I've said that many times. I love the public transport. I think it's good. It could, of course, be better. 
but I choose generally to take the trainer bus where I can just to not get behind the wheel here because it's so stressful. And why is it so stressful? Everyone's being hyper, hyper aggressive. Everyone's uh, everyone's honking. It's like people liken it to driving, driving in other Mediterranean countries. So coming from Ireland, we have a whole different driving culture. It's very much a considerate, mannerly culture. Let people go ahead of you. And it's the 180 degree opposite of what it's like in Israel. So when people are driving and they're driving like maniacs and they're cutting people off and they're not letting this guy into lane and they're being very strong, I think what's underlying that is the fear of being a flyer. No one wants to let the first guy into the lane because the second guy and third guy and fourth guy are going to come and then you're going to be you're going to miss your meeting, so you're going to end up a flyer. You see the connections now. I think another strange cultural dynamic of Israel that's connected to this strange friar culture is something called Shitata Matzliach. Shitata Matzliach uh, literally translates to uh, uh, trying the successful method and it means basically trying your way, uh, hoping, the other, hoping the other party doesn't say no, right? So you ask for uh, 30 days vacation if you're negotiating a job contract and you hope the employer says, oh, that's fine. Again, my understanding as a non-Israeli looking at this culture and sort of making my own uh, notes about it. So I think Freya culture and Chitata Matzliach are connected. One example of what I consider a bad uh, sort of outcome of Freya culture is, and I'll give it, this is, this is a sort of cultural uh, example here, is when Israeli when Israel was having the uh, COVID, the outbreak of COVID, the government had very strict laws about don't visit other people for a while. It was really crazy for a period. And a lot of people were flouting this law. People were very openly visiting their family members, even though they weren't supposed to. And there was no enforcement of the law, really. The police said, we're going to have these checkpoints, but everyone knew there's no way the police are, are going to be able to police the entire population and prevent uh, someone in this neighborhood from going to dinner and this person. So that's an instance where friar culture would say, you don't don't it would be like a friar move to play by the rules because everyone knows you can get away with it so that's where i see the bad side to friar culture i think israelis will uh share my amusement at friar culture when we discuss it and i think most people would also probably agree that it's generally a uh, not so nice feature of the israeli culture and i didn't by the way make this video to criticize israeli culture as a newcomer it's not my place uh, I just think that this is sort of a funny dynamic, but at the same time, it can have negative uh, repercussions stemming from it. So those are my thoughts. If you have other opinions about uh, Freya culture, what it means to be a friar, what, why Israelis are so worried about being a friar, if you think it's a good, there's other good aspects I didn't touch upon, other harmful aspects I didn't touch upon. Uh, I'd be interested to hear your views. Please leave me a comment. Thank you for watching. And if you want to get more videos uh, about life in Israel, uh, my observations, um, I do have a living in Israel playlist on this YouTube channel and I post the Israeli related videos under that uh, playlist. Thank you for watching and uh, speak to you soon.